you're wanting to get into reading, this is something new for you, but you don't know where to start and you don't know what genre to start in, that's what I'm gonna help you with. I will be giving book recs based on genres that I frequently read. So timestamps are below if you're looking for a specific genre. I want to start with a genre that I am this year getting really, really familiar with, historical fiction. This has quickly become one of my favorite genres and I've read quite a few this year, but one that really stuck out that would be a really good intro to the genre is The Briar Club by Kate Quinn. Kate Quinn is who I started with when I got into historical fiction. I've read I think five, six of her books now. I'm so drawn to her writing. Her audiobooks are wonderful. The Briar Club specifically has a good mix of historical elements, women's lit, humor, and a little bit of mystery in there too. The Briar Club is a group of women who all live in the same house in the 1950s in Washington, DC. It's a story about friendships and secrets. In this book, you're getting a lot of different POVs, so it's very fast paced, it keeps your attention. Again, there's that mystery element. There's a girl named Grace who moves into the house and kind of causes the house to stir a little bit. There are some house rules and then she comes in and she kind of breaks all the rules. People are very drawn to her. So she's a very magnetic person and you get different POVs from all of the women that live in this house. And again, there's a mystery element to it. So there's something that happens at the beginning of the book and you don't really find out anything, obviously until the end of the book, but you're going along on the women's journeys leading up to the mysterious point. If you are starting a new genre, maybe you've never read a historical fiction before and you like audiobooks, I would recommend Kate Quinn's audiobooks. I love the narrators and I think that the storytelling that they do Perfect. The next genre that I want to talk about is mystery thriller. I don't read a ton of mystery thriller, but I do like to trickle it in throughout my months to kind of mix it up, a little palette cleanser from the romance and fantasy that I read, but it is a genre that I'm learning to love more and more with each book. One of the very first books that I read in this genre and enticed me to read more, a good girl's guide to murder. Our main character Pip opens up a cold case murder in her small town for a school project and you're following along with her on her journey with her friend group and her family and stuff goes down. There are three books in this series and I highly highly recommend them if you've never read this genre before because it is so easy. And listen, with mystery thriller I am the most gullible person. I've said it a million times on my channel but I'm so gullible. I can usually never guess the ending of a mystery thriller book like it might be so obvious it might even be written on the page and I still cannot guess it <laughs> so I loved this book for what it was it is young adult and if you want to get into the genre this is a good place to start another one another really good one a little bit more adult would be Frida McFadden she has tons of books so many and they are so short they're less usually less than 300 pages and so fast paced. The Housemaid series is three books and then Ward D. I've only read four books from Frida McFadden, but the ones that I have read, the four that I have read, I can usually binge read in a day. Super easy. Like just the dialogue in here and the writing style, you cannot put it down. The chapters are so short. She is a great author to start with in this genre. The next genre slash genres that I want to go over is fantasy and romanticy. Now, I used to say to everyone who asked, I'd be like, yeah, fantasy is my favorite genre. But in reality, romanticy is my favorite genre. I like a romance book with fantasy elements or in a fantasy world. I haven't read enough high fantasy, like pure fantasy, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones kind of fantasy to really give a recommendation. So I won't be, and I'm sorry, but I just started reading the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. I want to read Outlander soon. I want to read these high fantasy books. I just haven't gotten there yet. So I'm still kind of dipping my toes into the big scary fantasy genre. Romanticy though, I have plenty of recs for. I have a spicy romanticy option and I have a not very spicy romanticy option because some people like spice, some people don't, but I think romanticy is such a good genre that I want everyone to read it and I don't necessarily think you have to have spice in a book to make it good. So I want to give two different options. They're all behind me. I'm not gonna pull them out, I forgot to, so I'm just gonna put them on the screen. But this one is so popular, you've probably seen it everywhere or if you're not in any book 
community at all, maybe you haven't heard of it, Powerless by Lauren Roberts is a really good young adult easy to get into, the world is not complicated, there's really nothing hard to understand about it because it's really just focused on the characters. It's a very character-driven book and there's no spicy scenes but there's a lot of tension, bicker, banter, flirting. The flirting in this book gets gives me butterflies when I when I read it. It's a little Hunger Games-ish as well so if you did like the Hunger Games it has those elements with the trials. Powerless, Powerful, and Reckless are all in this series and the next one does come out next year so if you want to get into the romantic genre this is an amazing start. It's not complex, it's fast paced, it's entertaining, it has likable characters. The world has some politics to it, but nothing compared to like high fantasy, high romanticy kind of books. Such a good one to dip your toes into. And the spicier option is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer Armentrout. I started with this series after I read A Court of Thorns and Roses. It was one of the very first romanticy series that I was like obsessed with and so absorbed in that world. It's a little trashy. Politics don't really make any sense, <laughs> but the banter and the smut and the characters, I loved. Again, it's not the most flushed out writing. A lot of big paragraphs with info dumps and stuff that's important to know, but it's just not trickled throughout. It's just like dumped right on the page. That world and those characters, I look back very fondly upon is that the saying? <laughs> Enjoyed the series even if I know that there's better books out there. I think it's a good place to start. It gets you into the political element without the politics being too much or too hard to understand. From Blood and Ash, I did enjoy the series. There's also a spinoff series that I even enjoyed a little bit more than the original series. So you've got a lot of books and I'm pretty sure it's almost finished or it is a finished series. Totally recommend it. And last but not least, we have romance. Romance is an umbrella. That's an umbrella term. There are so many sub-genres within romance and we're gonna talk about each sub-genre. I have 12 recommendations that I'm gonna give you just within romance. I wanna start with rom-coms, romantic comedies. I have a book recommendation and a author recommendation in this genre, A Not So Meet Cute by Megan Quinn. If you do follow me, you've probably seen this on my channel for the past month or so. I read it recently, so I keep thinking about it, keep talking about it. This one is so fun, so funny. Our main character, Lottie, is looking for a rich husband. That's like in the simplest terms. There's a reason why she's looking for someone rich and with money. <laughs> <laughs> she's hilarious. She has no filter. She will have you laughing out loud. There are obviously some cringy parts in this book and I think in a lot of rom-com. Honestly, in this genre, you kind of just look over the cringiness. This is a marriage of convenience book. Huxley and Lottie get married because it mutually benefits both of them and I don't want to spoil anything else, but it's really fun and spicy. So easy to read. I mean, the font is like size 20. It's it's an easy book. So if you're wanting to get into the rom-com genre, this one will have you laughing. It's pretty cute, pretty funny. Loved it. It is also a part of a series. So this is book one. Now the author that I want to recommend is actually one of my favorite rom-com authors and I haven't read any of her books this year. So I'm kind of disappointed in myself. Tessa Bailey. I think she's hilarious. If you look at the reviews on this on Goodreads, it will change your opinion. You won't want to read them, but I'm telling you that you should read them. And if you trust me, even if you're new here and you don't trust me yet, hopefully you can trust me after I recommend them. You have to go into these books knowing they're probably not going to be the best. Like they're not going to be your all time, all time favorite books ever, but they are fun and they're worth it. And I think Tessa Bailey does such a good job of keeping you entertained with real realistic and unrealistic expectations. She uses realistic elements within her characters, but there might be some unrealistic things happening in those characters' lives. Honestly, you can't go wrong. Again, there might be some cringy parts, but it's rom-com. Like, they're supposed to be cringy some of the time because not everything that's funny to Tessa is gonna be funny to me. I'm not on a first name basis with Tessa, I don't know why I said that, but <laughs> the next genre, and this is what I would say is my favorite genre, emotional, in-depth, women's lit romance books. Perfect series you should start with. Abby Frickin' Jimenez, the Part of Your World series. Part of Your World is the first book. Yours Truly is the second book. And Just for the Summer is the third book. You do not have to read them all in order for it to make sense. I read Yours Truly first, Part of Your World, 
then I read just for the summer and it made perfect sense to me. They can be read as standalones, but they are better read together. This one was my favorite book out of the whole series. Just for the summer, it came out this summer, and I think it will be in my top like five books of the year. All of the characters have past trauma, current anxiety, things that they're going through. They are deep characters, where in rom-com, you might not have a lot of backstory to them. As with these characters, it feels like you know them on a base level. Like you have been with them for their whole life and you know things about them that are probably private. It makes them so real. It makes them flawed. Justin and Emma are the two main characters in this book and I absolutely adore them. I related to Emma on a lot of different levels and I think that's why I connected with this book so well. But again, if you're getting into this emotional in-depth women's lit kind of genre, Abby Jimenez is a great place to start. How many times am I gonna say that in this video? I mean, that's the whole point of this video is like a great place to start, but like how many times can I say it? The next genre, again, one of my favorites in romance. I love to hurt myself and I love tearjerkers. Romantic books with emotional elements. The very first tearjerker that I ever read and one of the most loved romance books in this community. Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. Such a good duo. It's second chance. There's also time jumps. You're reviewing a relationship that's set in the past and then fast forward 10 to 12 years and you're watching present day. So there is like this back and forth and it's leading up to the present day conflict that they both are going through. If it doesn't have you emotional, then I'm, I would be surprised, but I really, really did enjoy this book. When you're in the mood to be emotional, this is a good option. Then we have sports romance. Sports romance is probably my most read genre. I feel like I've read the most in sports. But what I think you should start with is Hannah Grace. Now, I didn't start with Hannah Grace when I got into this genre, but I think if I did start with Hannah Grace, I wouldn't read anything else. <laughs> so this is a hockey romance series. And the first book is Icebreaker. You guys have probably, it's so popular. You've probably seen it everywhere. A hockey player, but there are no sports involved. There's cardio, if you know what I mean. Icebreaker, it's very unedited where these two are quite edited, but I still love them just as much. I just finished Daydream the other day. Daydream and Icebreaker tied for her favorite. Wildfire was not my favorite, but it's a part of the series and I think it's good to read them all together. You don't have to read them all together, but the friend group is so big in this that I think you should read it. So if you're gonna start with one, I would start with Icebreaker. So fun. Our main character, Stasi is a figure skater and our main character, Nathan, is a hockey player. Something happens with the ice rink at their college and they have to share ice rinks. So the figure skaters and the hockey players have to share rinks and stuff goes down. All three really, really great romance books, sport romance books to start out with. And then there's hundreds of other sports romances that you should read. The last category in the romance genre, I'm gonna call dark romance. But I think dark romance itself is a little umbrella. Like, what are we talking? Are we talking mafia dark? Or are we talking dark trauma? You know, trigger warning filled trauma. I'm gonna talk about both. <laughs> so I have two recommendations. Let's start with dark. Black heart, skulls, death, <laughs> mafia, violence. I'm gonna recommend an author in this, and I think you should start with Emily McIntyre. Hooked, Scarred, Wretched, Hexed is coming out soon. There's another one. Twisted and Crossed. It's a big series, but none of them are connected. Fractured fairy tales is what she calls them. Not retellings, but for example, Hooked, the very first book, is a Peter Pan fractured fairy tale, and it's dark, okay? It, they, they, they're dark. Don't go into this thinking you're going to get a cute little romance. No. They're, it's more erotic and more smut driven. There's a lot of spice in these books, but the plot is still there and it's unique and different. It does involve some drugs, violence, gangs kind of stuff, but this series is all different retelling. So the second book is Scarred and it's a Lion King fractured fairy tale. It takes elements of these stories that we all know and love and 
puts them into a really, really, really dark book. But I think it's a good place to start. It's where I started and it got me into other books in this genre. Now, trauma dark romance, like just traumatic, kind of sad, like who would think to write this book? Like this is terrible, but you still eat it up. I'm going to recommend Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. This is actually a series as well. So Binding 13 and Keeping 13 are two characters. Then there's kind of a spinoff or more books three and four based on two other characters in this friend group. But this book is dense for a first book. Maybe don't want to get into a dense book, but there's so much dialogue. It took me like a day and a half to read. Like it's really, it did not, it took me longer than that, but there's a lot of dialogue, not a lot of description. Characters are super lovable, so you kind of just want to keep reading. You want to be in this world. And Chloe Walsh does a good job of that, where there's humor dripped into this really dark topic. There's a lot of trigger warnings. Traumatic. These characters go through a lot, and they're only in high school. So those are my firsts. Those are my recommendations. If you're wanting to get into reading, I think starting out with one of these books will help you kind of get sucked into the joy of reading. I really do think these books are good starting points. That's it for this video. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you in the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below if you did add one of these books to your want to read or your TBR. I'd love to know. Bye.